Greetings. My name is Kevin Reddick, and I welcome you to my channel, Conversations from the Hot Box. Here we discuss real-life issues from a Christian biblical perspective. I ask that you please don't forget to hit the subscribe and notification buttons to like us and revisit our channel for more engaging and enlightening videos. Today's conversation addresses the question, are you waiting to exhale? So jump in the car and let's ride. Last week, uh, our discussion in the hot box took us to this year's presidential election. During the 2024 presidential election cycle, the United States of America uh, was placed on a roller coaster ride. We encountered emotional, ethical, spiritual, social, and uh, intellectual ups and downs, twists and turns. Uh, at many times, uh, many of us became sick to our stomach. Many of us took the position hold, of holding our breath. Some started to breathe again when Vice President Kamala Harris entered the race as a presidential candidate. Expressions of joy, refreshing, turning the other page, etc., were heard daily. We could uh, uh, be, uh, or all could be referenced rather to breathing again. Yet many are still holding it, their breath for several reasons. To hold your breath refers to not exhaling, not expecting something to happen for a very long time. It means to wait anxiously or excitedly to see what happens next, or to be in a state of suspense or anticipation. According to the Bible, there were a couple of times when even God was holding his breath, waiting to exhale. The 400 years of silence, uh, referring to God not speaking, was marked between the book of Malachi and the Gospel of John, as an example of God waiting to exhale. According to the book of Genesis, the identity of mankind can only truly be defined as that of a spirit being. In addition, the fulfillment and empowerment of man's purpose are provided through the spirit of God. In Genesis, we also find that the woman was built. The Hebrew word translated as built is it is usually an architectural term and it is used functional, functionally only here in the Old Testament. Its basic meaning is to build, to establish, construct, or rebuild. It refers to making something uh, new using prior uh, existing materials, according to uh, Genesis 2 and 22. It is used for making uh, palaces or a temple or forms of art. It implies that the woman was meant uh, not only to be a companion, to be a helpmeet for man, but an artistic appealing work of God. Part of the creative work of God is that this appealing work would have the capacity to sustain her own beauty. He placed the woman uh, uh, in a position where she, within herself she has the means to sustain, procreate, make, and build up a family. God wired and formed man to protect, provide, lead, pursue, and maintain dominion and rulership in the earth. This may be why many men are mostly task-driven and many women are relationship-driven. One of the issues that came because of the fall was the loss of the balance between the two. Men need to build spiritual and natural relationships as well. Yet because of this imbalance, our breathing has been abnormal. And in some cases, it has stopped completely. So uh, ride with me through a few scriptures as I build my case here. In the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 7, it states, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. 
in Genesis 2 and 7 out of the Scriptures 2009 translation. It reads, And Elohim formed the man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of lives, and man became a living being. This is a new translation that states that in the original language, this text reads, breathe into his nostrils the breath of lives. So let's start looking at some definitions. Breathe into his nostrils uh, refers to perhaps the the most significant use of this statement, uh, which is the giving of life, the creation of man, uh, and the revitalization of dry bones, so to speak, that we see in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37 and 9. Then there is breath, referring to the vapor and air which comes out of the lungs through the mouth mouth or nostrils to exhale, or the movement of air. And there is spirit, the innermost part of a person that can respond to God. And then there is life. Life is, as a noun, is the condition of living or the state of being alive, especially healthiness, happiness, exuberance, energy, vitality, and the like. I want us to understand, too, the statement that man became. What God purposed in his mind, God's original intent for man occurred because of God's breath. He became because of God's breath. And the same is true today. In Genesis chapter 2 and 7, the phrase living being may be translated as living breath, thus matching God's act of breathing. Note the difference between the two phrases. Breathe into his nostrils the breath of lives and the man became a living being. The first phrase indicates an action, breathing, performed by God, the source of life, while the second phrase describes an element of God's action, namely living beings, which introduce symbolically the living breath. So in other words, Adam does not receive a soul here, but rather he receives from God that which causes his soul to become a living breath. Adam was a living breath from the first moment of his creation, and he was empowered and charged to continue this flowing of living upon the earth. What Satan accomplished in the garden was the taking of Adam's breath away. Genesis 2 and 7 is presented not as a simple end product of God's actions, but it represents Adam as a part of the creative action of God, a living breath designed to produce many other living breaths, and all together establishing God's breathing as a source of life upon the earth. Adam's fashioning does not stop with the sixth day. Once having received, uh, receiving God's breathing life, Adam or mankind was to continually refreshing, refashion, excuse me, refresh and restore life. It is the male seed that gives or creates life. The egg is dormant and it is the seed that brings life. Presumably, the Spirit of God, the breath of God, coming directly from God. God breathed into man the ability to reproduce life, spiritually and naturally. That's why God was able to build Adam's wife from Adam, and she have life within her without God providing his breath into her, as he did with Adam because it was already there through Adam's DNA. Genesis 3 and 20 tells us, and Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Adam did so because he knew he was the father of all living. 
The problem is he lost his ability to transfer God's DNA, God's spirit, along with Adam's natural DNA. So the breath of lives Adam was assigned to transfer as he multiplied himself upon the earth was reduced to just his physical DNA due to his disobedience in the garden. Adam and Eve were purposed to be the life-giving ones and therefore receiving the breath of lives. And this is how we were originally purposed to be fruitful, subdue, and have dominion. Adam also had lives in him in terms of where and how he could function in the earth. He could function on, on land, in water, spiritual and natural, because he was amphibious. Now, to be clear in what I'm saying, God is the source of life. He is the breath. The man was purposed to be the conduit of that source. The reason why we must have this uh, refreshing is because we must maintain the ability to build, to share, uh, to, to maintain, develop, and advance life. We see Jesus, the last act, declaring the restoring of the spiritual reproductive assignment of the first Adam in John chapter 20, verses 21 through 22. And there it reads, So Jesus said to them again, Peace be unto you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he has said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. The process of breathing on someone has very important symbolic implications. In some occasions, this can be related to a blessing, as in John 20, 22. Ezekiel 37 and 9 reads, Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, O uh, man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. That was like an amplified Bible. Winds are symbolic of new life. Prophecy in this text refers to speaking under the influence of the divine or his anointing. This is spirit speaking to spirits, the four winds. See, the wind may be a source of blessing or a curse, according to its purpose. And its vast power suggests the wind is the breath of God, Isaiah 40 and 7. It is controlled by him, created by him, and created for his purpose. The announcement of the gospel was the announcement of the good news, the restoration of the breath of spiritual life upon the earth to those who would receive it. This was the original ability and responsibility of the first Adam that he lost in the garden. So God had to reestablish it on earth to flow through mankind again. And this required him to take on flesh himself to perform the things on earth to reestablish God's original intent for man. In this text, we see the phrase to breathe upon. It refers to exhale or expel breath into or onto something or someone. In fact, Genesis chapter 3 and 6, uh, where it says, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of his fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. From that moment to John 20 and 22, which states, when Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit upon his disciples. Between those two moments, God was waiting to exhale. To exhale simply means to breathe out. But God, because he is a God of purpose, needed somewhere for his breath to be received. 
Jesus commanded that we receive the Holy Spirit. He wants us to receive or accept an object or benefit for which uh, uh, the attentive and initiative rests with the giver. But the focus of attention in the transfer rests upon the receiver. So what was God offering? Like Hebrew, uh, uh, like the Hebrew word ruah, the Greek word puma uh, uh, ranges in meaning from wind to breath to spirit. In the New Testament, the spiritual sense is by far the most common. It can refer to the inner essence of human life or an immaterial or spiritual dimension of human life, in which case it often contrasts with the flesh. Spirit, or referring to the human spirit, may also refer to an attitude of mind or spiritual state, especially when influenced by the Holy Spirit or God's spirit. God understood that this second breath of lives coming through Jesus needed to be prepared for just as Agam was prepared. Agam was prepared by the shaping of God's hands and the provision of a nose which God used. The people of Jesus' era also needed to be prepared and provided with the means by which one could receive. John the baptizer was the Jesus era nose, so to speak, <laughs> functioning as the a uh, creation error nodes that was provided to Adam. Why, John? Because he was anointed by God himself to do so while he was still in the womb of his mother Elizabeth. As the nodes, John received the breath that the kingdom of God is at hand and that the Lamb of God was here to take away the sin of the world. Within a single breath of God are many active living powers, abilities, messages, declarations, and decrees. For example, there is the life of the Holy Spirit. There is creative power. There is the life of deliverance, healing, empowerment, enlightenment, regeneration, as well as the life of destruction. Yeah, I lost some of you right there. Right there. Read your Bible. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8 tells us, And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The breath of lives consists of purpose, vision, destiny, fulfillment, discernment, reproduction, and contribution. Through the outpouring and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, God is now exhaling, giving us once again the breath of life. And every human being was created to accomplish something specific with those breaths that no one else can accomplish but you. And it is critical for you and I to understand this truth. We were designed to be known for something special. You and I are meant to do something that will make us unforgettable. You and I were born to do something that the world will not be able to ignore. Now that something may be in your church, your community, your state, your in place of employment, your business or beyond. What that thing is, is determined by the lives you have within you that you are breathing out. Without exhaling, none of the above can happen. So the question to wrestle with is, what are you doing with your breath of lives? Is it in line with the original intent of God? Is it flowing from you to others? Or it, does it remain stagnant inside of you as you hold your breath? I pray, Father, to bless us to exhale the life 
you had breathed into us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that's it for this session. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the ride. Uh, if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, click on the button above labeled Prayer of Salvation or the link in the comment section below. Uh, otherwise, thank you for spending some of your time with us. Please take a second to like this post, share it with family and friends, and subscribe to this channel. And as always, as always, peace and blessings to you and your household.